Hello and welcome to the 12th tutorial on how to make a game in XNA. And in this tutorial, we're going to go over pathfinding. Uh, I probably won't complete this in one tutorial, but we'll try to get through this the best we can. So, uh, before I made a pathfinder class right here, uh, I'm going to put uh, the code in the description. Uh, if you want me to go over this or want to teach you how to make this, uh, just leave a comment and I'll make a tutorial on it, but just for the sake of this series, I don't want to go over this whole thing, because it, it's sort of long and uninteresting. So, uh, right now I'm just going to import this this class from uh, another game I made, so just add existing item, Pathfinder. So then, I'm going to change the namespace to our namespace, which is a zombie shooter. Save it. And as you can see, uh, we're getting errors already. I should have to just fix up a couple things real fast. There we go, there we go. Okay. Uh, oops. Some of the things are named differently, and uh, one of the things is uh, we don't have a grid class. As you can see, uh, it's giving us some errors. It doesn't know what grid is. Just capitalize all these. So we're actually going to make that class right now. Uh, so grid, it's Basically, the A star it works on a uh, a grid or cells. So everything is cell based. So we're gonna use uh, square cells in this algorithm. So that's why I named it grid. It's uh, one grid piece. So I'm also going to actually I'm gonna create a new class. Just call it grid. Okay. Uh, now we want to import all the XNA framework stuff. Okay, there we go. For that we want to create some variables. Uh, public int g equals zero. Right now, this if you don't know how the A star works, this might not make any sense to you right now. Why am I just making variables with random letters? Well, if you read uh, how the A star works, I'll put a link in the description. It'll all make sense if you really want this to be a point. Parent point. Public bool. The main things you want to know is uh, these booleans were, or that that one boolean we just made, uh, walkable. So that basically just tells you if it's walkable or not. So it's basically it's saying if it's a wall or not. Can you walk through it? Let me just make a constructor. No, I mean a reset method. G equals zero. H equals zero. F equals zero. Parent equals zero. Point zero. Closed equals false. Okay. So that's the grid class. Hopefully we're not getting any, any errors. Okay. Alright. This is not supposed to be stacked. get rid of that. We don't need that. Okay. So that should be good. Now on to our enemy. Okay, so there's a couple of variables how we're doing on time. We have to add to the enemy. Uh, first, we have to give a destination variable. We're going to make that a vector 2. 
call it destination. Then we need to give, let's see, uh, a map variable. Call it map. It's going to be a 2D array. Then we're going to need a, a list of points. And we'll call that a uh, path. So basically, you know, on a GPS, how if if you say, okay, find shortest destination, and on the roads, it has like a little line path. Well, this is basically just keeps track of every node or uh, place you turn on that path. So it's just yeah, a list of points. Call it path list path index this will keep track Oops. this will keep track of of what path node we're on or we're trying to reach so at default it'll be set to zero and private actually we don't need to make that yet uh, I think that's it. Oh, just to be safe, private rule wrote map. This basically just says, did you write the map yet or not? Because later we'll be threading and uh, threading. It doesn't. They can happen at the same time, and so we just need a boolean to make sure that it's wrote the map so the thread can work with it. We'll go over that later. Add a rate. Okay. Seems I have to do more to this. Yeah, I did it wrong. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's that's all the variables we need so far. Uh, now we have to change the, something to the constructor. Almost running out of time, so just set destination equals position at default, so it doesn't go searching something right away. Uh. And actually, I want to set health equal to 10, just something random. Okay, now moving on. Uh, let's see. Okay, so... Back to update method. Actually, I want to put it if alive. If you're not alive, then you're going to return. Not do anything. Okay, so... Actually, I want to set, I do want to set this variable. Private bool queued. How do you spell that? Okay, there we go. So this will basically keep track of if it's queued or not. So, uh, actually, you know what, I don't, I don't think we'll need this right now. Sorry. Okay, actually, let's uh, make another method called a move to destination so let's just make it uh, actually right under the update method so private void move to destination uh, it looks like we're almost running out of time so we'll probably have to continue with this in the next tutorial let's see okay we still have some time okay so in this, in this method, uh, see if path equals equals null. So if the path isn't set, basically, or if not is not declared, I'm just going to put return. Oops. So if the if you haven't read the map yet, it's just going to return. So if path index is greater than path dot count and this is basically just so this is saying if the path index or if the current index or if the current node it's on is is smaller than the path count which is how many nodes is in the path uh, list it's going to continue searching or continue following that path so 
create another if statement if we're going to create another method called step to point and what this will do is basically uh, just move in the direction or it's basically going to execute the push to method it's basically going to say push to and then if it successfully pushes to that uh, place without hitting anything or anything like that it's going to return true or if it hasn't reached that destination it's going to return true so if it's moving along that path oh no if it's if it hits something or or if it's reached the destination or that point in the node it's going to return true so it's going to make the path index increment by one else it's just going to keep uh, moving along and just skipping this so path index and we're going to pass in an argument called or an argument and it's going to be uh, the current node so then we have to make another method called step to point oh looks like we're going w way over so uh, hope you enjoyed this tutorial I'd appreciate a rating and see you in the next tutorial